right, I have started to clean up the pieces and started to do some repair work on, on some of these things. Here's the flyer and the, the worm gear. I got that straight. And we've started working on the ratchet here. So cleaning these things up and getting them right. So far here's what I've done. I've put these guys nice and line and they're locked in place now for the flyer. So the flyer will work real well. So we'll set that here. Um, I went ahead and straightened out the shaft here. Got the shaft all straightened out. Now something that was really cool here I wanted to show you. Remember on this plate when I took the remember this was this was in here like this. And this was on here like this. And we took it I took it off. Remember I took the screw out. Took the screw out and we brought this out and I took this off. We were just looking at this at the time. That was what is interesting. But here, here's something I want to show you. See those two dots there? See these two little pins here? There's two pins. So we do this all the time in iron work and in, in other things like this. But those two pins, because you're going to, you're going to hold it in here with a, with a uh, where are they at? There we are. You're going to hold it in here with a screw, right? And to, but the screw would allow that piece to pivot on that screw if it was just the screw in there. So these two pins were added to keep it from pivoting. Uh, I've done that many times in iron work and I've seen it done you know, like in yellow pieces and others uh, where a blind rivet is put in there to keep the piece from pivoting after it's in there. So there, you know, we were looking at the shaft and I was so excited about that, but so there that is. See those pins? So we're starting to clean up those things. I'm going to clean up the back of this guy yet. Um, remember, this is what the this is what the gears look like. They're all kind of they're in good shape, but they're a little bit cruddy. You know, of course, you know, over 200 years. So a little bit cruddy. So I started to clean them up. I cleaned up this one, and look at what I found. It's really cool. Let's go into this side here. I don't know if you can see it there, but you can see that in the scribe lines for the gears. So the machine has put a scribe line on here, around there, and here. That was all black and cruddy before. Uh, so you so he could, you know, to lay out his work. Also, what I didn't realize is the spring here. See this here's the spring. Remember, this, there's a latching mechanism. The spring is made of brass. Usually, and I would have expected it to be made of steel. Okay, but this one's made of brass. And that's probably why it's lasted so well, so long. Okay, so nice. We can see the gear now, nice and brass. Now, I have taken off, here's the little catch wheel, this little guy. He's on there and he catches in, he catches into there. So I've taken him off because he, he, was, he was laying down on the side. He wouldn't go up where he needed to be. Okay, and as I got him off, he was a little bit bent. Okay, and there was, uh, it was rough. There were some markings. He was a little bit bent on the shaft here. So I cleaned it up with the file, the, uh, the, the bad things that were done on it and uh, straightened it out. We got it all straightened out. So now I want to clean up this drum a little bit. Just clean this up a little bit. We're not gonna, we're not gonna get rid of that. Um, but we may, we may brighten it up on the edges just a little bit because they'll be seen there. And uh, put this back together and you can see how it works. Okay, so here I've put this back together. You can see that little guy is right there. And the spring will put him in place. Let's, let me show you how he works, okay? So I'm going to put this together here like this. Let me turn it around so you can see 
can see what I'm going to do here. Oh, see, did you see me just put it, set that right in place there? Now watch. See it working? See how nicely it works? Tripping right in there, just the way it was supposed to, huh? See? Push back against it, there it is. Oh, that's nice. Good. We've got that working. So now let's basically clean it up and put it back together. All right, now for the cleanup of the brass, getting all the dirt off of it. Now I must apologize. I actually filmed the entire process while I was doing it. You could see the dirt and everything come off, but sadly enough, the camera uh, malfunctioned and it, and it was all uh, blurred. The, uh, the focus was no good. I may show you little bits of it. I, I think it's worth seeing. But So I'm going to go back over what I did. <clears throat> do you remember how black this is the back of it was? And do you remember how black that was as well? <clears throat> they were both filthy black uh, with grit from over all these years. Also, on all these edges, there was a buildup of the buffing compound whenever they polished this. Even this side was black and gritty in spots, especially around pins. They were all black <clears throat> and build up across here with uh, the polishing compound. And the thing about that is that polishing, polishing compound really sticks to it, and then over the years it really binds, and you just, it's difficult, okay? And you, you end up with a, with a scraper and scraping. You know, we don't want to, we don't want to scratch this. We don't scrape this. So here's what I use to clean metal when it's like this. When I'm cleaning dirt, paint, and grime off of metal, and I want to bring it back to its look, its original look. For you know, Don't go to all these conservators and all these highfalutin ideas and, and chemicals and you know, oven cleaner and all. Keep it simple. Keep straight on. I use sodium hydroxide, lye, here. I get it in crystalline form. Now, you used to be able to buy lye just, you know, at the hardware store, no problem. Straight lye in crystal, you take it out, you pour it in water, make a strong solution. Made a strong solution in this little plastic thing. If you have trouble finding sodium hydroxide, right there. Crystal Drano. It's almost pure sodium hydroxide. And the other beautiful thing about this, when you get all done, the harsh chemicals that you used, <laughs> it's drain cleaner. You pour it down the drain. Okay, so you don't have to worry, uh, you know, uh, harsh. We don't need. The last thing we want are acids or anything that would etch the metal. Lye does not etch the metal at all. It just, it, it, it breaks the bond of the dirt to the metal and removes the stuff. Whether it's old paint, varnish, lacquer, uh, gold leaf, the, the, the size and the, um, the burnish that's underneath the gold leafing, it'll dissolve, it will loosen it all up and it comes right off. So what I do is I will take this, dip it in the lye water, I have this in this plastic tray, I'm wearing plastic gloves, and then I will just paint it on. And that's what I did in the other video. I painted it on here, just, just taking and painting it on. And as I was doing it, you could see it just there was, it turned into a puddle of mud down here, and it was just the dirt all coming off. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I'll usually put it on and let it sit for an hour. In this case, I, I put it on, and I even put it face down in this pan with little plastic spacers, so it was up just a little bit, and the, lots of it actually sat in a bath of lye for about one hour. Uh, when I came back, I was thrilled. I was thrilled. I took just a brush across it. You remember that hard, packed uh, polishing compound that was in here? Even into the cracks, I took the brush over it, and it came right off. Uh, sometimes you'll take a, a, a scotch bright, take a scotch bright pad, and you can sit here and, and go across it with a scotch bright pad. You don't even need as much as 
You don't even need steel wool. You know, steel wool scratches. Scotch Bright, it doesn't scratch anything. And and with that lye, after it soaked for a while, everything comes off. Look at this. Every every bit of that black nasty came off on this, okay? So remember that lie. Now, it's as cold weather right now. We're down right about freezing. And so it doesn't act very active. If this was uh, an 80 or 90 degree day, it would work even better. Uh, the temperature will make it uh, more active. So, but I had no problem. This was beautiful. It just, it cleaned it all right off. And now we have a, this beautiful piece. I can polish it up and do it. I did the same thing here. On uh, Look what I did. Let me set this guy aside here. And since we're not using this, I'm just going to set this out here. But when I was working it, if you saw the other video, I, I did all my work in here. In this little plastic tray, the lid from an old tote. And uh, I had this setting in here like that. And I just did my work. Everything kept in here. And... Uh, <clears throat> And that's why I soak. So that's what you want to do. Protect yourself. Protect your, your, your area because it's caustic and it will sting. It'll burn. Okay. But it's not as abra it's not as harmful as, you know, don't use muriatic acid. Don't use any acids that etch. Okay. And so that's what you have to be careful with these detergents and stuff. If you were to use a uh, oven cleaner and stuff. Some of those things have stuff in it that may etch. You know, keep it simple. So I cleaned off this guy. Well, you can see little little lines that they turned in it when they were spinning it, laying it out. And look how nicely it cleaned up. It cleaned up really nicely. Here's the uh, bottom gear. I already started to lubricate the gear, but you can see the gear there. The well, that's not a gear. That's the ratchet that the that the little thing goes into. Okay, here's that. Now I did the same thing with the gears. <sighs> Washed them all off with lye. Oh, they were black. They were black. And and in in each one of these teeth, in the depth of it, it was just you know 200 years of grime and dirt, especially in a fireplace. For crying out loud. This one too. Cleaned them all up nicely. Now see how beautiful that is. Now, the iron work, in this video, I'm wanting to tell you all these things because some of you are going to do this sometime. Some of you are going to be asked to restore a piece or whatnot, and you need to know this information and it needs to come from someone who actually does, does this work, not somebody who uh, reads books and tells you how to do it, okay? Somebody who's got experience and done more than one, all right? So... Iron work that's going to be inside, you see, I want that, the beautiful look of that. You can see it here in the picture, I think. Okay. So, I use a wax. Now, like, like, forgive me, I'm all over the place when I talk. In this video, I'm going to show you, uh, tell you exactly what I did, telling you what chemicals I used, and I will list them all in the description, the actual brand name and everything, okay? So you can refer to that. But the iron work, I want it to look certain type of beautiful, right? This is what I use. Carl Close turned me on to this. And this is a Liberon wax polish. And then we use a Tudor oak. Because the old iron has a little bit of brown to it, right? So we want that little bit of brown. And so that's what I've used. That's what I've used on this, on the iron work here, right? After I cleaned it up, this... This wax polish uh, with a Tudor, Tudor oak. Um, and you want to use wax and not oils because oils act like a magnet for dust and dirt. And they will pull dirt to them and oils evaporate. So they're not protecting the um, metal, only temporarily. And in that time, while they are doing it, they're just pulling dirt towards them. So wax the pieces with that wax, okay? And that's what we use there. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble this now. That way I have it all cleaned up. And just test it to see how it's going to run. And then we'll 
we'll go on from there. Okay, real quickly, I have put this together. I just want to give it a test fit, make sure everything's fit, working, and right before we go on. So this is just a real quick test fit, putting everything together here. There we are. <clears throat> well, it looks nice anyway, huh? Looking good. Let's try that ratchet here. I'm going to sit down here. On the edge, so I can work it easily enough. Oh, listen, listen to that. I like that. That's working exactly as it should, isn't it? Okay, let's see what happens. We go. Oh, look at this. Look at this. I'm, I'm just using pressure on the handle here, as opposed to having the weight hooked to it. Yeah, I just want to make sure the things are working. Wow, the flyer just barely clears that point on there. But there it is. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Good, I am thrilled. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, make the I'm going to make the replacements for these. These went here, right? And I'm going to make the uh, you can watch me forge the pieces that go out and will make this piece stand off from the fireplace. It'll stand off from the mantle, and then that will be able to judge where this has to be cut off and the pulley put in here. So. Come watch me forge that, these pieces now in iron. <laughs> 